Hey everyone, today I'm going to be painting the world's fastest heat conductor called a heat pipe with liquid crystal. So I got this liquid crystal paint from a place called solarcolordust.com. I'll put a link in their description. They actually sponsored this video and sent me all of these cool paints. And what's amazing about this liquid crystal is it changes color depending on the temperature of it. Okay, now watch how cool these liquid crystals look painted on these heat pipes. Watch what happens when I put an ice cube on them. <laughs> so here's how liquid crystals are able to change their color. So their atoms are arranged in crystalline form. Now when light shines down on these atoms, it gets reflected like this. But not all of the light gets reflected on this first layer of atoms. Some of the light passes through and hits the layer below it. But notice how the light that went through the first layer of atoms, it had to travel a little bit further than this light. So if I take ray one and ray two and draw them down here, but this time I draw them as a wave form, meaning they're electromagnetic waves, you'll notice that their peaks and valleys line up. But when they exit the material, their peaks and valleys don't line up anymore because this one had to travel a little bit more. And if it's a certain multiple of the wavelength, it'll shift this wavelength a little bit. So depending on how close the second layer of atoms is, or depending on the angle that the light strikes it, you can see that you can get either constructive or destructive interference of that light wave. So you can see that when I change the angle of the heat pipe with the liquid crystals on it, you see changes in colors. But what about if I change the distance? Well, you can change the distance of liquid crystals by changing the temperature. When you change the temperature to a higher temperature, it increases the distance between that first and second layer of atoms. Now the specific distance between the layers of atoms to block light or let it through is dependent on the wavelength of light. And so it will do this specifically for each wavelength of light that comes through it, so for each color that's coming through it. So the reason you're seeing a change in color when I change the angle or change the temperature of the liquid crystals is because I'm shining white light on these. And the white light is composed of all the different wavelengths of light. So depending on the temperature or the angle, some wavelengths of light are being reflected completely and some are being destructively interfered so that they can't reflect. And so that whatever combination of light that is, that's the reflection that you'll see and that's the color that you'll see. So that means if you're just to shine one single color of light on the liquid crystals, a monochrome light source, then you should be able to see it grow brighter and dimmer as the temperature changes and not change color at all. For example, here's what this looks like in white light. You can see it's kind of purplish blue. Then when I put it on this monochromatic light source, it just looks black. Now let's see what it looks like as I change the spacing of the atoms in this next to this monochromatic yellow light source. Okay, I'm gonna put some ice on it. You can see how it gets brighter. And then darker again. Now what you'll notice about this is the colors that you see are the colors of the rainbow. You'll notice these are the same colors that you see on the surface of a bubble, and these are also the same colors that you see when you heat a metal up. In this case, it's due to the space in between the atoms of the liquid crystals. In a bubble, it's due to the surface thickness. When you heat a metal, it's due to the oxidation layers getting thicker and thinner. So if you don't know what a heat pipe is, here's how it works. So let's cut this open and see why this can transfer heat so much faster than a regular copper rod. So copper can transfer heat at around 0.4 kilowatts per meter Kelvin, and this heat pipe can transfer at 100 kilowatts per meter Kelvin. Okay, so I've split open the end and bent it down here. So you can see the inside of it, it's not just like a smooth copper pipe inside of it, but it's actually really spongy. So the sides of the wall here are almost like it's a sponge. And the reason that that's in there, because inside of this, there was actually a little bit of water. So then how this heat pipe actually works is it's made of copper. And so you still get the copper conduction itself, but the magic comes from the water vapor inside of it. So the tube starts off at a very low pressure, but as you heat up one end of it, the water that is at that end of the pipe heats up and when it heats up, it vaporizes. 
and as it vaporizes, the pressure increases. And if the other end is colder, then that means that there's a pressure force driving that water vapor to the other side. So at high pressure over here, low pressure over here, and so all of that water vapor gets pushed to that side. But now the other side is colder, and so the water vapor now condenses. And so basically you get this fast push of water vapor to the other side and then it condenses. And so it takes heat from this side and quickly pushes it to the other side. And so that quick heat transfer comes from the heat it takes to vaporize the water and then it puts that heat back on the other side when that water condenses. And so it's this continually efficient heat pump that continually takes heat from one end of the pipe and pushes it to the other side of the pipe. And thanks again to SolarColorDust.com for sponsoring this video and sending me all these cool paints and pigments. So they sent me some liquid crystal paints and they also sent me some UV reactive paints. Look how cool these are. Okay, so we start off with this. Now watch what happens. Watch what happens when I stick it under my garage here. <laughs> That's so cool. It's like magic. Suddenly there's vivid colors now. If you wanna check them out and buy some of your own, go to solarcolordust.com. I'll put the link in my description. And thanks again for watching another episode of The Action Lab. I hope you liked it. If you did, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell so you can be notified when my latest video comes out. And I'll see you next time.